Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just finished breaking down Game 4, really the entire series between the Pacers and the Celtics, as the Celtics sweep the Indiana Pacers and are the first team to punch their tickets to the NBA Finals. Uh, we'll see if the Mavericks join them tonight, but in this segment here, we are going to talk a little bit about the Celtics' path to the finals, and I know there's been a lot of conversation about that around the sports media world, talking about how, oh, they have faced three teams where they didn't, all three of those teams didn't have the best player on their team for injury reasons to get to their run, and they're saying this might be the worst, the the easiest path to the finals in NBA history. Uh, there's a really good article on Yahoo Sports by uh, uh, Ben Rohrbach that we're going to go over that talks a lot about and talks a lot about that, breaks down a lot of the numbers. Uh, so we will go through that in just a second. But before we do, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you have a burning question about sports, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I will go ahead and answer that as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate all of you for sticking around, talking some sports with me on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Uh, once again, that link is on the screen. It's gsmcpodcast.net. But like I was saying... We are going to talk a little more about the Celtics' path, and I haven't really gotten too far into it because the Celtics have had an easy path, just just straight up. And it doesn't really surprise you if you take a step back from being in the moment of, oh, everybody's bashing on the Celtics because it's the Celtics, and of course they made it, because this was the expectation, right? There's a reason that this is the storyline right now, and it's because... Like I was saying in the first segment a little bit, if the Celtics didn't make the finals, it was going to be a disappointment. They were head and shoulders, maybe a whole body above everybody else in the East for the entire season. You know, it wasn't really even a con it wasn't really even a contest. You know, everybody would have laughed at the Celtics if they had not made it to the NBA finals. You know, this was the minimum that they needed to accomplish because the East was so weak this year. You can look at the standings from seven, for, for every single team that made the playoffs, seven and eight included, they were separated by less than five games. It was kind of a crapshoot. It was the Celtics, and then it was everybody else. You know, it wasn't really even that close. So that's the reason why this conversation is happening right? This conversation is happening because the Celtics were head and shoulders above everybody else in the East, and this was the expectation for them. And if they had fallen short, it would have they would have been the laughingstock of the league. But now that they have accomplished the bare minimum for their season, which is make the NBA Finals, people are asking, hey, is this the easiest run ever? And it's not the fault of people for asking, you know, this is always the question when people want to discredit teams. It happened in the NFL with the Eagles last, uh, just two years ago, you know, when they went and faced the Chiefs and lost in the Super Bowl there, they had a very easy run and people were saying, oh, they don't stand a chance because of the easy run. And I feel like that's a good example. Even though they didn't end up winning, that game went down to the wire against a very, very good Chiefs team, a Chiefs team that has now won two Super Bowls in a row, you know? So, just because it's an easy schedule, it's an easy road to the finals, doesn't mean that this team isn't great. Because this team is great. It objectively is. There's a reason that people are hating on people on, on Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum's MVP case, because, oh, he has a super team. It's a super team. This team is incredible. And their run to the finals, they, like I said, they probably would have made it even if they faced an, a completely healthy squad in all three of these rounds. It would have been harder, but they would have made it. And they took care of business. It's not their decision. You know, they lost someone as well. Christoph Rosingis is a big part of their game. Uh, but round one against the Heat, no Jimmy Butler. Round two against the, uh, against the, the Cavaliers, you know, no Donovan Mitchell for the last couple games. Round three... <laughs> Against the Pacers, obviously no Halliburton for the last couple games. So we saw how it goes. 
and they were a little more competitive in each series. But if you just go based on the numbers, regular season wins, averaging the, the opponents that it takes to get to the finals, they had the 18th easiest, 18 out of 40. This is going back to 1984, which is the first year that the field expanded to eight teams per conference, so 16 teams total. 1984 is the first year. Uh, didn't go any further back than that. It's it's a lot to go through box scores uh, all for, for a long time. So we, we, we I limited my search back to 1984, uh, which, like I said, is the first time that we had the NBA uh, bracket as we know it today. They had the 18th easiest. So there's 40, 40 teams, 40 years. They had the 18th easiest. So they're around 50% here. Uh, the average win count for the teams that they played uh, is 47, right? The Heat won 46, the Cavs won 48, and the Pacers won 47. So it's right there in the middle. Like I was saying, the 8 seed, the 6 seed, and the 4 seed, you know, all separated by one or two games. So th that's how this that's how the state of the Eastern Conference is. Uh but, you know, people make this argument, you know, the, the 2016 Golden State Warriors are had had an easier easier schedule by the numbers. And I know that doesn't tell the whole story, but that's just how that's just how you have to look at it a little bit. This was not the easiest path ever. They had to go through their own stuff, and it makes it look easier because of how dominant they were in the regular season. That regular season dominance, the way that they were able to hold back everyone else in the East, and I mean literally everybody else in the East, contributes to this kind of narrative here. And like this article points out, you can go back to, you know, 19 the 1980s the 1984 Los Angeles Lakers who had the second or 1987 Los Angeles Lakers who had the easiest schedule uh 30 39 is the average for wins that they played in all three rounds for for all the teams that they played nobody talks about that anymore that's not important in 10 years from now no one's going to be like oh the Celtics yeah, they had a super easy schedule to get there, so it doesn't count. No, that's not what's going to happen. Uh, this team is really good, and they deserve to be there, and they have legitimately they have legit championship odds. There's a reason they were the favorites heading into the playoffs. There's a reason they that they've been favored in every single matchup. There, there's a reason they're this good. So don't sleep on the Celtics because they had an easy path. Sure, it was easy, but it was not the easiest one ever. And that's not an easy thing to just sit there and say, oh yeah, this is the easiest one ever. Because I know personally, I did not watch every single game, and I was not alive in the 80s to really get the uh, the full scope of, you know, all the context of what's going on in these games anyway, even if I were to watch it. You know, if you are just watching these these games, especially this this final series, the one that they swept the Pacers in, if you watch this game 20 years from now and you don't know anybody on either team, you look at these results, three-point game, three-point game, two-point, you know, the overtime games, you say, oh, this was not an easy, this was not an easy schedule at all. This, 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 was a, this was a tough series that they managed to get through on their way to the finals. Obviously, with context, we know a little bit more, but that's always how it goes. This was not the easiest path in finals history. They had to work to get here, and the regular season is a big part of that as well. In our next segment... And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. But we're going to transition out of basketball now. Uh, and in our next segment, we're going to move onto the ice. We're going to talk about a hat trick propelling the Dallas Stars. Jason Robertson puts three goals up on the Oilers and powers them past to a 2-1 lead in that series. So coming up next in segment three, we will talk about that. Stick around in segment four. We're going to talk about Angel Hernandez. Uh, being uh, finally retiring from the MLB, and there's breaking news out of the NFL we will cover in segment five, along with some proposed new rules. So stick around for all of that. We will be right back on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. <laughs> 